So I'm actually making another video because this is one of the frequently asked questions on my Facebook chat and at the same time through YouTube comments. So if you did watch my previous video which is A2P10 DLC Twilio registration, you already know that one of the requirements to basically get approved for your campaign is to make sure that you do have a live website which I actually have in front of my screen now. And you also have to have this entire opt-in form with this opt-in terms and conditions. And so for today's video, I want to be able to cover what needs to be there and how you can actually add this form into your website. All right. By the way, guys, if you are watching this video for the very first time, please support my channel. Do subscribe. And at the same time, comment if you do have any questions. So like and subscribe and definitely share this to anyone who's using Go High Level and definitely REI Reply because everybody needs to do this right now or at least until August 31st for A2P campaign registration. All right. So yeah, let's get down to the business. How do I add the form? Actually, it's super easy to add the form. You can just simply do this in less than a minute inside REI Reply. So if you're in REI Apply, just go to your sites and here you can actually go ahead and go to the forms tab. From the forms tab, not the tab, but there's the option that says add form. So you can either select an existing form or you can create a new form. So just for the sake of this video, I'm actually just going to create a new one because everybody wants to know how do I add that this checkbox i'm not seeing that option anywhere actually rei reply made it really simple now that if you added just the phone number in your form it automatically adds that checkbox because obviously it's now part of the requirement okay but yeah, I'm actually now making this form uh, that I can go ahead and insert into my website. So here, you can simply click add form element. Basically, what do you want to have in your form? So I'm just going to create like a very basic form wherein, well, I just want to collect customer's full name. Okay, so as you can see, I don't have any, any of the checkbox yet. But notice that if I added just the phone number, automatically there is going to be this little disclaimer at the bottom that says i confirm that i want to receive the content from this company in the past you will not see this automatically in there but now as soon as you added that you're collecting information like phone or email that disclaimer or checkbox is going to automatically appear which is really nice okay so you don't have to do that you know manually anymore okay so yeah how do we edit this uh you know cc looks like i'm not good with this wording what do i do right so you can easily just click on that specific consent or disclaimer words. And then from here on the right hand panel, you're going to have the option to modify this wording based on how you wanted it and what do you want to do with your consent form. Not everybody understand this because, you know, okay, now I'm done. I now have the form. So am I good to go? The thing is, if you'd notice, I do have like a really long disclaimer on your client's website. That's because you're not just supposed to add that checkbox in there. It doesn't mean that if you do have that checkbox that someone can put a check mark on, it's good. Because now TCPA, which is the telephone consumer company created this law or telephone act, they created this regulations that you're actually not just supposed to collect information but at the same time you do have to make sure that people know or your users your client know or they provided consent on how what exactly how they will be getting this text what information you're going to be sending me is this promotional is it transactional they need to know those specifics in that exact wordings need to be in your form and guys this is very critical because most people who got rejected for A2P campaign is only because of missing this exact disclaimer wording. On this video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what are the rules, what needs to be included there. Because again, the rule is they need to be able to know, track when your customers actually opted in, what SMS needs to be there, if they did express written consent or was that web form digital consent. So yeah, it should not just be a submit button. I have here, I prepared like PDF file. Well, I'm not including this in the description, but in the description comment, you will be able to access, actually you will be able to access it, but there's gonna be a fee to, to be able to get this and just copy and paste. So let me just talk about the TCPA guidelines. So like I mentioned earlier, it has to say how, when, what, who, right? Those things. And I actually just created like a little TCPA eight step up in formula that needs to be in the wording. 
again guys this is not just a2p compliant but at the same time it's tcpa compliant because just so you know if you're not tcpa compliant in terms of your opt-in form you know you could you could be in trouble there's regulatory body enforces i mean laws in their FCC basically that checks and see if you've done this correctly or if you're marketing incorrectly every day they're actually looking for violators so you have to make sure that you are able to do this correctly for your website okay so yeah let's talk about it so when creating a disclaimer so these are the steps things that you really need to make sure that you have in your form so definitely you have to have the electronic signature so I did mention that one of ways for them to provide a consent is a digital consent so this checkbox as soon as they select that and select submit that's already electronic signature that enables your users to provide their consent so the wording is gonna say something like by clicking yes you can change that but that's obviously what should be there pretty much it has to also have the specific content when I say specific content your business name should be part of the consent because it they're providing the consent to your business not to anyone else so your business has to be specifically in that actual wording so here it's gonna say your choice home buyers you're providing consent to your choice home buyers and our partners just to make them aware that it's they're providing consent just to your business most importantly communication methods so this is number three in the requirements you have to be able to communicate to them or ask consent that hey this communication will include text message phone calls pre-recorded message if you're doing rvm artificial voice messages and also tell them how that's going to be sent so my example here is like your choice home buyer will send text messages phone calls pre-recorded artificial messages either from our phone system or using automatic telephone dialing system mind you guys go high level is an ATDS so it's like telling them that that's our CRM number four is definitely detailing out the exact opt-out process this is very important actually when you register your campaign one of the things that they're gonna find in the wording is that people has to have a way to opt out and you have to be able to include specific keywords and destination where to send it to make sure that they know how to easily opt out this is a very good example i can unsubscribe anytime by simply sending stop to this phone number so as you can see this is like very very detailed and like like a very vague consent agreement because again this is also tcpa compliant not just a2p compliant right what else needs to be there number five is has to provide consent compliance this is really really important guys like i said you can get in trouble you can be fined five thousand dollars four thousand dollars especially if you did send message to people that are on the do not call list so it's important that in your consent form you also tell them that okay they're actually providing consent to us even if you were previously on a do not call list because people can dispute that and say well you're contacting me things like that just make sure that this wording is right there okay because again this ensures that users understand that their consent will not be affected by any existing DNC registries. Uh, what else? Number six is that they have to be, of course, legally or technically on a legal age to understand your terms and conditions. So guys, part of the opt-in form is to have like a website privacy policy. So normally the standard procedure is that the users need to read your terms and conditions to know how do we collect information, things like that. So I have here on my document an actual website pri privacy policy that you can just copy for your business if you're in real state because this is specific to real estate like how do we collect how we use your information so yeah that's that's what's there in in this part it actually stating that okay when i click on this checkbox i'm actually telling you that i'm 18 and i have read your privacy policy or terms and conditions other than that also important verify information that actually tells us that okay who submitted the information whoever submitted that information that's their phone number that's their name and it's not associated with someone else so this is also important and finally sms data charges actually you can just copy and paste this entire message date rate may apply just to inform users about the possibility of any incurring standard messages rates or data charges okay so again guys this is already tcpa compliance so you just don't again i'm very repetitive you can get rejected if you don't have this exact wording so here i have a lot of examples you can use for your business specifically for real estate so just simply copy and paste change your business name change the phone number change the keyword that's all you need to do go to form builder basically just paste it in there and you're done just save and once that's actually in there go ahead and go to your website attach it to your website so yeah i think that wraps it up i don't want to make this video too long because i know that some of you just came here to see how i can add that checkbox but for some people you guys need 
need to understand that it's not just a simple checkbox. It has to really provide specific details on how your consumers or clients are actually providing their information and how they're actually consenting to for us to use their information. So yeah, again, if you do have any questions, feel free to leave them on the comment section. Again, share this video, subscribe, and also comment down if you do have any further questions. Please do watch out for my updated video for the A2P and DLC registrations. This is more so I actually have it on pending right now. But yeah, so like if you're struggling with REI to apply, just make sure to watch this new video on what you should need to do to make sure that you're gonna get approved. Thanks everybody and happy Friday. <laughs>